Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2Design. In this training tutorial, I will show you how to create a run cycle animation within Blender using the Beefy Rig. This rig was created by Luciano Munoz and it's available for free on its Gumroad page. You will find the link in the description below. Luciano is a great animator. He has taken classes at the Pepe Land Animation School and he helped me output this animation, giving me some nice feedback and advices on how to enhance my animation. I know it's not perfect, but I believe that for beginners and intermediate users of Blender that will be a great training tutorial. The first thing we have to do is to open the latest version of the Beefy Rigged character. And if you get any error message, just click the Reload Trusted button. I will then open the animation timeline and will uncheck the auto recording button. I will set the time space from 0 to 24 frames. And from there I will prepare the rig for the decaying. So currently I will check each bones available and I will lock the unused transform channels. To do so, I just check the rotation of the toes, for example, and I see that I just want it to rotate on the X and Z axis. So I will lock the location and scale, and right click copy all to select it, so that I will propagate this property on both selected feet. Then I will switch by pressing Ctrl R to Euler rotation. And I will lock the Y axis and right click copy all to select it so that both feet are locked. I will do the same for all the controllers available here. So you can see on the right the different layers allowing you to easily access to the different controller. And now I will check the foot roll. So basically it only needs to rotate on its X and Y axis. So instead of having a quaternion rotation with four axes, I will switch to YXZ Euler rotation. Currently, you will choose the type of Euler rotation with, in the second position, the axis you want to lock. So here it's the Z, so I've chosen X, Z, which is in second position, and then Y, to avoid uh, gimbal locks and stuff like this. So I will now speed up a bit the video. Just slow it down using YouTube tools if you want to see exactly which channel I'm locking. But that's pretty simple. For example, for the pole, you don't need to scale it or rotate it, so I lock everything but the location. Another example is the knee. I know I can bend my knee only in one direction, so I will switch it to Euler rotation and lock every axis but the X axis. A bit later on you will see that I had some issue with the tweaker bone that I wasn't able to select. Um, currently we won't be using them so that's not a big problem so you can just keep this layer hidden and just forget about them. But if you were to use them, just check how they move and which channel would be useful for you and just lock the other ones. The next stage of this video will be available at 5 minutes 20 seconds. I'll see you there.
with all my bones filtered I will now create the decaying set. So what I'm generally doing is that I will create an empty action in the dope sheet and then I will write a keyframe for each bone only on the channel we'll be using. Let's create a new window, open the dope sheet and let's switch to the action editor. Then we will create a new action and call this 00, zero king set. And now I will select the torso bone, lock the scale because I have forgotten it, press I and select lock rot so that it will write a keyframe for the location and the rotation of this bone. Then for example I can do the same for the torso, the same for the neck, etc. The keys I choose to write are the keys available, so these are the channel we haven't locked. If a controller is supposed to move, I will add a location keyframe. If it's supposed to rotate, a rotation keyframe. If I will be able to scale it, a scale keyframe. And if it can do everything, I will set a keyframe for every channel. Then we'll delete the locked channel inside the rotation because Blender will write a rotation keyframe for example on every rotation channel and if we have locked the Y rotation channel then we'll have to later on delete it. So I've just sped up the video but just write a keyframe wherever you need it depending on the channel. And don't be afraid if you make a mistake, you'll be able to add a new keyframe or remove it later on. Once I'm done with all the controller, I will select them all so that I can see all the custom properties and there is a bunch. And for each slider, I will insert a keyframe by uh, hovering over it and pressing I. Once done, in the dope sheet, I will select each channel and I will check if I haven't forgotten any keyframe, like here. Let's add a scaling property for the head. And I will delete the channel I don't want to use. So for example here, the forearm rotation, I can see that the Y and Z are locked. So I will just select both keyframes and remove them. And it will automatically update. We just now need to do the same for each uh, channel. Honestly, this takes like 10 minutes and you should do it because it will clean up your animation dope sheet, meaning that there won't be unused keyframe and when it comes to the graph editor, this will be really useful. So this is the end of the part one. You should then have a T-posed character with a nice keying set and I'll see you on the next part where we'll be blocking the animation. But before though, I will just go into the rig properties, go to the bone groups and give different color depending on the left and right uh, position of the controllers. So I just select a bone group, go in the color set and change the color set. And you will see also your keyframe uh, changing color which will be easier to organize later on.